Hi, everybody. Everybody get, get in your seat. We are going to get started right on time tonight. Let's see if we can do it. Um, let's see. Maddie's getting there. Everybody's getting all ready. Ooh, here comes Zachary running in. Oh, look at that. Right on time. Awesome. Okay, we are going to try to be speedy tonight. Let's see if we can be super speedy. Let's get all settled. Here we go. Okay, we are going to run through all of our verses, and we're going to do this. We're going to say our verse of the whole week, and then we're going to sing the song that goes with it. Then we're going to say the verse from the first day and sing the song, and the verse from the second day and sing the song all the way through really quick right in a row, and we're not even going to look at them. Let's see if we can do it. Let's try, because I think you guys are smart enough and you can do it. Okay, so here we go. The first one is... 1 Timothy 1.17. See if you can, now say that with me, ready? 1 Timothy 1.17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Let's do Genesis 1-1. You ready? Say it with me. Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here's the next one is Psalm 14.3. Get ready. Psalm 14.3. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Genesis 11.9, this was from yesterday. So I think you can do it, though. You ready? So say it with me. Genesis 11.9, therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth.
I love that. Okay, so now we have a new one tonight. And here is the new one. So it is John 1, 12. And let's see if we can say it together. And we might say it together twice. And then I'll show you the song that goes with it to help you learn it better. So here it is. Ready? John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Let's say it one more time. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So here comes the song. Let's try it. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. So now that you heard it, let's do it one more time and see if we can get it. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Let's stand up and do it once. Stand up. up. Let's sing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me see. What was it? Let's sing this one while we're here. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Yep, you knew. You knew where I was going. Not yelling though, just a little bit louder. I know I just put that one up there, but that's not the one next. Let's try this one right here. Yes, my favorite. Yes. Awesome.
you're doing so awesome. Okay, we've got two more songs I want to make it through, and I think we have just enough time. Let's try it. Let's see if we can do it. Ready? Let's do this one first. Then we got one more. Okay, yeah, I like this one too. I see some people are like, uh, I don't know. Okay, no. so let's do it one more time. Look, just this little part. So, hola, right? We said that was Spanish. Bonjour, we said that was French. And that was salve, we said that was Italian. Shalom, we said that was Hebrew. Right? And then konnichiwa, we said that was Japanese. So, Japanese. Yeah, those are hard words. Let's just do that last little, can we do the two last, that one, the slower one, the slower one, the faster one. We'll just do it one more time, this part. Okay, last one, and we have time. Perfect. You did so good tonight. I was like, can we make it through all of them? And you made it through every single one. This is the last one I wanted to get through, so good job, good job. Okay, why don't you, do you want to stand up and sing this one? No? I got a lot of, okay, never mind, we'll just stay, we'll stay. All right, here we go.
a good test, right? <laughs> Admit. I still think you could probably sing that whole thing without looking, but we're not going to test it right now. So we have a really special speaker tonight that's going to do our lesson. Who do you think it is? Does anybody have a guess? Raise your hand. What do you think? Not Daddy. He was last night. Daddy was last night. Mr. Daddy was last night. Who else? Who else? Anybody got a guess? Zachary. Okay, so pastor's coming up, so he's going to have the lesson for tonight. You guys are doing a great job with the singing and the verses, and uh, I'm looking forward to the whole church here on Sunday night. Did you know we have a special meeting Sunday night? I hope you'll be here. We'll have special service, and we want you to sing. We want you to do verses, and then afterwards we'll go next door, and there's going to be the best snacks of the whole week. So we hope you'll be here. All right, what is this? Look at this. Uh, I found that the other day, and I thought, we'll just put that up to start. What, why are we doing this? Uh, there are seven words up there. What do they all have in common? They all start with C, right? And you, you can see that each of these is supposed to be kind of a C on there, and then a little picture. But here's why these seven C words, we're trying to study the Bible. And the Bible is a huge book. Not only is it huge, but it's ancient. We're talking 2,000 years old. You may have never read anything else 2,000 years old. So to study that book is a real challenge. And the purpose of these is to get the whole picture, the big picture. What is the Bible about? This is it, melted down, or at least that's their interpretation of it, which is, which is great. So creation, corruption, catastrophe, confusion, we've already covered those. Tonight, I'll try to deal with Christ and the cross and then tomorrow night, consummation. And that is the end. That's what consummation is. It's the pinnacle. It's the mountain peak. So what we want to do is review these here quickly. First of all, creation. What do we need to know about creation? Here's the thing. This is the big thing. From creation, we learn that there is a God, that he's really powerful, and that he's really, really good. And we just sang about how we mess things up. But here's what we need to understand. God never messes up anything. He is perfectly good. We tend to be sometimes okay, sometimes not okay. Or we might say good and bad. God is never like that. He's perfectly good. And the whole universe demonstrates that. I wanted to, to, to use our memory verse and just kind of highlight the point of it. How do you know that there is a God? How do you know that he created how do you know that evolution is a lie? How do you know that we didn't just come from monkeys? How do you know that God made everything? No one knows that except God because he was the only one there and he told us. So it comes down to whether you will or will not believe God. He's a good God, no reason to doubt him, no reason to not believe him, but that's what the Bible says. It's the very first verse in the very first chapter of the very first book of the whole Bible, you take that whole big Bible, this is the first thing that God says. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We learn from that that there was a beginning. There was a beginning for everything except God. And we learn that there is a God and that he created the heaven and the earth. What was the second word? Well, the second word is corruption. And you've heard this every day, but just establish this idea of the big picture. We start with everything being good, and then what happens? Corruption. What is corruption? I was thinking today, if you had an apple, okay, let's say you take an apple or any piece of fruit or vegetable, and you don't do anything to it except set it on the counter or on your kitchen table and let it sit there. What happens to that apple after a period of time? Maybe a week. It gets rotten. That's exactly what this word means. Corruption means decay. It means rotten. When God made the world, there was nothing rotten. 
It was nothing decaying. It was perfectly good. Why is there corruption? There's corruption because of man. God didn't make the corruption. Man made the corruption. It's because of sin, and that's what we just sang. They are all gone aside. That includes you and me, everybody. They are all together become filthy. But wait a second. You're not filthy tonight. I mean, you look really nice. You have nice clothes on. Your faces are clean. This is not talking about filthy hands or filthy clothes or a filthy face. This is talking about a filthy heart. It's talking about filthy on the inside. It's not just what we do or what's on us. It's talking about our hearts, our souls. They're together become filthy. The result is, watch this. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now listen. How can the Bible says, how can the Bible say there is none that doeth good? You have teachers sitting right with you. They're doing something good. They're here with you. And, and we've eaten snacks. That's a good thing people do. We have folks playing the piano, leading the songs, doing the lessons, doing the, doing the games, all these different things. These are adults who are doing good things. What does this mean when it says there is none that doeth good? Here's the key. There's no one that does good like God does. It's not comparing ourselves with each other. Because when we compare ourselves with each other, we all can find someone that doesn't behave as well as us, or someone that doesn't listen as well as us, or someone who doesn't obey or do the right thing like maybe we would. But we're not comparing ourselves with people. We're comparing ourselves with God. And compared to God, there's none that doeth good. Do you know why? Because God is perfectly good, always good, never anything less than good. He's absolutely good. That's our God. And then we had catastrophe. Now, catastrophe and uh, the confusion, they both are on the same day. But, but here's what we need to understand. This is a result of sin. Both of these are how God judged the world. And catastrophe is a terrible thing. Because in the big picture, God made everything perfectly good, and then man messed it all up. And so God intervened after many hundreds Many generations of people, do you, you know what happened when God did that? It's not just that he flooded the flood of the earth, he did that. But why did he do that? God gave the whole earth a big bath. God destroyed everything. Listen, everybody who was alive was killed. You, you, you imagine today, if you were asleep in your bed, and all of a sudden a flood came, and it was higher than your roof. It's really bad to God. And then God created this confusion. Why did he do that? It's all about language. But what was the problem? From the ark to the confusion, many generations after the flood, there were only eight people alive. Many, they just had babies and there are new parents and moms and dads and many generations of people. But they got so bad that they said, we're going to make our way to God. We are going to work our way to God. The tower was extraordinary, but it's not just about building a tower. There's nothing wrong with building a tower. The idea is trying to be like God and reach God with our own works. That's the idea. That's the big picture. And so God judged that. He didn't wipe them out like with the flood, but rather he wiped out their language so that they couldn't understand each other and they couldn't connect with each other. And, of course, that next verse is that God confounded the language of all the earth. So that brings us to the new stuff, and that's Christ. So, God is perfectly good. Man messed everything up. Because of that, God judged the earth, ruined the, 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 ruined the human race, just wiped it completely out. It started over with eight people. And then, even after that, there was more of, of confusion because people trying to reach God. We come to Christ. What is that? I hope you know some of it, but it's important to know who Christ is. And there's a couple things I'd mention. First of all, Jesus is Christ. I hope you've heard of Jesus, but Christ is not his last name. Like my name is Dan McAvoy. But people often, like tonight, when I was going to come, Mrs. Jennifer called me not Dan, and she didn't call me McAvoy, she called me Pastor. That's a title. 
It's not my name. Christ is a title. And that word Christ means savior. It means the promised one. Because way back in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and his God sent the flood before God confounded everything. As soon as there was corruption, God came to Adam and Eve and said, I have a rescuer. I have a savior. I have a deliverer. I have a way to fix the sin problem. That's what he did. So Jesus is the one. Jesus is the Christ. There's something more. Jesus is God. Now, if you know much about Jesus and what happened, and we'll talk about the cross in a moment, but if you know about that, it's amazing to think, how could he be God? And what does that mean? Well, that means he's the Lord. He's the master. He's the king. Or we might say he's the boss. He's the authority. The, the authority. He maintains everything. He's the one that created everything, Father, Son, and Spirit. Jesus is God. He's the Lord. He's the king. But then not only that, he never sinned. You see, this is the difference between you and me and God. I should say between all of us and God. He never sinned because he is perfect, and he's perfect because he's God. Now, if that's true, he's promised and he came. He's the Savior. He's the one who saves, rescues. He's God. He's master and Lord and king of everything, the boss. And if he never sinned because he's perfect, then don't you think people would have really loved him? And they did. They did. When Jesus was on this earth, people flocked to him. They wanted to be around him. They wanted to see him. They wanted to hear him. I mean, people flocked by the, just hordes of them, mobs of them came to listen to him and to see what he was going to do. And hopefully you know that Jesus did all kinds of miracles. He fed thousands of people. People loved that. He healed blind people. He helped people walk that had never walked before. He did all kinds of marvelous things that people loved. He preached. He taught. People loved it. There were people that had a disease called leprosy they would have died from, and they were isolated. Jesus healed them. One day he healed 10 of them at once. And then even one time, Jesus went to a grave. It was a different kind of grave because they were in a, in a, in a cave. Can you imagine that Jesus called the dead man's name. His name was Lazarus. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And out walks a dead person. He's not dead anymore. Because Jesus raised him from the dead. They probably loved him, don't you think? Then why the cross? You know, if you come back here... Uh, after the decorations are down, you'll see in the back of our auditorium a big cross there. What is the cross? You know what the cross was? The cross was where they took Jesus and they took a hammer and they took nails and they drove the nails right through his feet and right through his hands and then they took that, that cross and they stuck it down in a hole and they had him hanging up in front of everybody, totally ashamed. Totally humiliated so that other people would see this is what we do to criminals so that no one wants that to happen to them. It was horrifying. Why did the people do that? Why did Jesus die on a cross? Why was he executed? He died. It wasn't because they didn't like him. It's because they didn't like what he said. Because he talked to them about sin. Jesus is God. There's no way they could have killed him if he didn't submit to them. No way. He submitted to them because he died for your sins and my sins. Jesus took the punishment that we should get from this perfect God, and he died for our sins, but he didn't stay dead. If you come, you'll see that cross. There's no one on our cross. Why? Because Jesus rose. Why did Jesus rise from the dead? In other words, when... when You know, the idea is, well, she, she's going to go to heaven. And, and, and once she gets to heaven, she wouldn't want to come back if she could come back. Jesus came back. Jesus rose from the grave. Why did he rise? 
He rose for your rescue. He wants to save you. He is the Savior. He wants to save you from sin. He wants to save you from sinning. But he leaves the choice with you and with me. And so with the cross, here's a picture that sometimes we see. It's kind of the idea that you're one, on one side of a, of a big river or a big hole in the ground and you cannot get across. But Jesus is the cross and that's the only way. Jesus is not the cross. Jesus died on the cross and the cross is the only way to get across to the other side. How can a person have Jesus as their savior? Three things. Now you can find out. Number one, admit. Admit that you are a sinner. You have to do that. It doesn't matter how good you are because you're not comparing yourself. It does matter how good you are, but it's not going to get you to heaven. You have to admit that before God, he's perfect, you're not, so you're in trouble. You have to believe. Believe in Jesus Christ. There is only one true and living God. He's the one who is God, who never sinned, and who is perfect, and he died in our place, and then forever receive. So the Bible goes on, and the verse that we started learning tonight, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, for a person to have their sins forgiven, it's not enough to believe that you're a sinner. It's not enough. It's not enough to believe that Jesus is the Savior. At some point, you have to receive him. And you can do that tonight. And we're going to invite you to do that if you want to. To receive is just like a gift. That's why he talks about salvation being a gift. It's a gift. You have to believe the right stuff. But then receiving the gift of salvation is receiving a person. It's receiving Jesus. It's saying, I know that he died for me. I know it's my fault because of my sin. I know he loves me, and I want him to be my savior. Let me pray together with you, would you please? If you would bow your head and close your eyes. Lord in heaven, I pray that you help the boys and girls tonight to admit their sins and believe in Jesus as their savior. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Boys and girls, I have three questions for you. If you would keep your eyes closed, that would be helpful. The first question is, will you admit your sins? The second is, will you believe in Jesus Christ? And the third is, will you receive him as your Savior? If you will receive Jesus, and you never have before, but you'll receive him as your Savior, and you want to do it tonight, I'm going to ask you if you'd raise your hand right now and just hold it up where I can see it. Anyone at all? All right, thank you. I see two hands. You may put them down. Thank you very much. We'll come and ask you a question in just a moment. Is there anyone else you'd say, I want, I believe that I'm a sinner. I will admit that. I want Jesus as my Savior. I'll believe in him. I want to receive him as my Savior. Anyone else, if you'd raise your hand. Okay, you may put your hand down. You may put your hand down. I see five hands, several other hands. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, let me uh, come around and ask you a question. Why did you raise your hand? Why did you raise your hand?
So, you did, okay. So what we do, boys and girls, you can look up now. What we do is just give a simple invitation, but we want to make sure it's really clear. So some of you gave wonderful answers. But what we're looking for is I want to trust Jesus as my Savior or something like that. So you did a really good job listening. I really appreciate you listening so carefully. And uh, I think we go to a skit now, don't we? I don't know. So uh, Janice and... Uh, Merlin and Andrew will take the kids, and then um, they'll be back in just a few minutes. But if you have any questions about this the rest of the night or tomorrow or Sunday, you let us know. We can show you from the Bible how you can be saved, and that's what the adults will do with them. Okay. I guess it's... Wait, wait she's got to get up. Wow, there's not much left of the ship. The mast is out, the steering's out. And we are out of options. Well, Sam, you'd think it would be pretty easy to find Cassidy on a tiny ship like ours. We check stem to stern. Yep. Fore and aft. Yep, that's And good. below deck and above deck. Well, that's everywhere. Do we check the cabin? Hmm, let's see. Miss Cassidy? I'm not here. Yeah, she's not in the cabin. Mr. James. Oh. Miss Cassidy, I know you're in there. I'm guessing, since we haven't completely sunk, there's still a chance we'll find the ancient treasure. Miss Cassidy, I know you forced our boat down Fortune's Fork, but since we've, then we've lost our main mast, we're out of gas, and we can't turn around and go back the way we came. No one ever found the treasure. And no one has ever returned. But I'll find it, no matter the cost. Or my name isn't. Cassidy Cash. Yes, yes, we know. Before all this, I was going to give you a grand tour of the jungle and even show you the amazing Riviera Falls. Do you know, from the base of those falls, the sun shines brighter than day. There's rainbows everywhere. Rainbow schmambos. Can you buy a car with a rainbow? Can you buy all of these wonderful toys with sunshine? Treasure is where it's at for me. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. That's right, Miss Cassidy. Jesus is the true treasure. He took the penalty <laughs> of sin for you. Not only that, but when you trust him, he gives you eternal life. He's a lifesaver. Mr. James? Not now, Sam. Mr. James, did you step on the accelerator? What are you talking about, Sam? We're picking up speed. Good job, Sam. You got the engine working again. It wasn't me, though. Mr. James, we're running out of river. We're what? It looks like the river turns into sky. I didn't know this boat could fly. Hold on, let's see. No, that's a waterfall we're going to go over. A, a waterfall? waterfall? I, no wonder nobody returns from Fortune's Four. There's no treasure. We can still jump before the ship goes over. Jump? Why don't we just get into the lifeboats? Lifeboats? This is a lifeboat. <laughs> yeah, I got it at an auction on one of those cruise ships. There's got to be a treasure. Come on, Miss Cassidy. Put on your life vest and jump. There's still time to be saved. I've come too far to give up now. Miss Cassidy is still on the boat. Hmm. I know. I guess she'll have to see the rest of the final part tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Well, let's see what time it is. We are exactly on time. That is awesome. So we are going to let the little ones go first. So the first row, go ahead and line up at the door. And how about this? I'm going to change it up. You ready? 
the last row, the big kids, go ahead and go that way so you can put